Stop union busting! Scabs out of the port! Stop union busting! Scabs out of the port! Scabs out of the port! Stop union busting! Scabs out of the port! Stop union busting! I want to tell people why we're out here today. And that's to show solidarity with the longshore workers in the Northwest who are in a fight for their life against the grain monopolies. And when I say grain monopolies, I'm talking about these grain giants that control 90% control of the grain in the world today. That's Archer Daniel Midlands, Bungie, Cargill, all of these uh, employers and Dreyfus, A, B, C, D, that's the easy way to remember these uh, monopolies. They're out to bust the ILWU. On February 27th, a couple weeks ago in the port of Vancouver, the employers locked out longshoremen. Longshoremen who have been doing this work for 80 years in the port. United Grain, which is a part of Mitsui OSK shipping lines, locked out the workers and brought in scabs. And the reason we're out here protesting is because Mitsui is part of the Pacific Maritime Association. The Longshore Union has a long history and a proud history of fighting for the working class. In this city here in San Francisco, other speakers have alluded to it. We had a maritime strike in 1934 that led to a general strike. That maritime strike won for all maritime workers a hiring hall. In Longshore, we won a six-hour day. What these grain monopolies are trying to do is to impose a 12-hour working shift and take away the hiring hall. We've got to fight back because a victory for the ILWU will be a victory for all labor. How do we do it? How have we done it historically? Going up against these shipping giants and the grain monopolies. In 1987, here in the port of San Francisco, the Marine Division of the ILWU, called the Inland Boatman's Union, was on strike against Crowley Maritime. Crowley brought in scabs into Redwood City to do longshore work. The Longshore Union didn't file an unfair labor practice with the NLRB. We knew what we had to do to protect our jobs. We shut the port down. Longshoremen and boatmen together marched on Redwood City. We chased the scabs off the port and they never came back again. That's how you beat scabbing and union busing and lockouts. Right on. Right on. Yeah. A few years after that, in the port of Stockton, Continental Grain was being struck because they were trying to do work without ILWU labor. They were using management and scabs to do ILWU work. How do we respond to that situation? We shut down the port here and we all marched in Northern California, all the ILW locals. We marched on Stockton. We shut it down. Nothing came in and out of that continental grain dock. That's how you win. Mass picketing that nothing crosses your picket line. That's what needs to be done in Vancouver today. Okay? So there's a history to this, there's a way to beat these monopolies, these capitalists, and labor has the power to do it. We've got to exercise that power. And actually in Los Angeles, the clerks, the uh, office clerical union, which is 50% women, 50% women, struck against these shipping giants. For eight days, they shut down the largest port in the country, Los Angeles, Long Beach. The largest shipping port conglomerate in the, in the nation was shut down by the uh, union for eight days. So they won a decent contract. Uh, but it took a while before they could do that. It takes 
a fight. It takes shutting down their operation. Uh, the local in Portland was faced with a situation where they were offered a contract that was just as bad as the EGT contract, the concessionary contract. The Longshore Union there voted it down, and the, the longshoremen in the port of Portland are calling for solidarity actions because they know that the way to beat these attacks by the employers is with mass picketing, solidarity actions, and shutting down the ports. Thank you very much. Victory to the ILWU. Stop the scabs and stop the lockout. Thank you. Solidarity now. Scabs out of the port. And I'm a former member of Ask Me, Local 444. That's the East Bay Mud uh, Workers. And I'm also a delegate to the Alameda Labor Council. The reason I'm here today is because Ask Me, Local 444 is one of the most radical Ask Me unions in the whole Northern California. And we have supported the ILWU. We've marched with them on May Day on a couple of occasions, in fact. And uh, we support their efforts with the ports and keeping the ports unionized. And what more can I say? That, that if the unions collapse, the working class is finished in this country. We are under attack like probably never before, maybe not even in the 1930s. And the super rich are claiming their right to rule the country with no, no measures to stop them. We are all in a very, very bad sh uh, situation at this moment in our history. And we are not all middle class people. They've eliminated the working class simply by saying they don't exist. That's a lie. The working class continues to work, and we're not, we're not getting benefits anymore. We're getting cut wages. We don't have any rights. With the exception of a few things like Ask Me Local 444 and the ILWU. That's why their, str their struggles are so important to the rest of the working class, and that's why I'm here today. Do you have something to say about the 34 general strike of the ILWU? Because my father was in it, and there's a story that you don't even find in the history books. And what happened was, it was on and on, on again, off again. A lot of things were happening down there in, in 1934, uh, 33 and 34. And one point, they kept bringing in scabs and so on. Well, at one point, when the workers were really strong, they brought in busloads of black people from the south who were really in, in even worse shape than the longshoremen there in San Francisco and tried to get them to uh, cross the lines. But Harry Bridges said, sign them up. And the thing is, that the, the, all the longshoremen at the time, they were all white and they were racist and they were gonna, trying to beat the people up. And Harry Bridges and his people went by and said no, gave them tablets and pencils and said, if they don't sign up, go ahead, hit them with a brick. But they all signed up. And because they signed up, everything went toward winning and the city shut down. And that's a really important thing. A lot of people don't know. My name is Charles Rackless. I'm a public worker and we're here to support the ILWU because we know that an injury to one is, is an injury, injury to all. Two years ago, on April 4th, the ILWU held a, a uh, one-day strike in support of the public workers, in particular, in support of the public workers in Wisconsin, where the, the governor was attacking the right of workers to organize a union. So all public workers have a, a not only a debt of obligation to the ILWU to support them, but that's how we can actually build our movement. Now, I'm a state worker. We've been under attack by both the Democrats and the Republicans for the last four years and beyond. They imposed, first Schwarzenegger imposed furloughs on us, and then Brown continued the furloughs on us, even though it was proven that the furloughs were not benefiting the state of California or were taking money away from people who wanted to, needed to, uh, to <clears throat> take care of their homes and their families. Today, in our unions, we don't have a leadership that is capable of fighting the austerity. We're going into contract negotiations in the fall, in the spring. In May and June, 
The contracts for almost uh, 250,000 state workers come up. Now, unfortunately, the leadership of our unions ties us to the Democratic and Republican parties and has been helping to impose the austerity. That is the role that the trade union bureaucracy has played both in the public unions and in the private sector. What they do is they demobilize the working class and when it's time to fight to defend our gains, to defend our unions from scabs, to defend our jobs, and to defend the entire class, we are not mobilized and we are not prepared to take on the fight. Solidarity now! Scabs out of the board! Solidarity and we need to get active in our unions to fight, to build support for each other. We've got creativity, we've got ideas, and we've got life to fight for, and that's what it's about. In our recent experience, in our recent experience, 1997, fire workers and longshore workers shut down the Bay Area, shut down a hundred billion dollars giant of the Bay Area on one day in September when longshore was on strike in defense of the Liverpool dock workers, the Liverpool dockers who came from the history of, a, of taking action to oppose slavery in the United States, started in 1800. We, with our general strike of 1934 in support of the dock workers, and the general strike of 46, which was we were backed up, by, which was started by the transit workers in the East Bay, we've shown that we can, with our solidarity and our direct action, we can bring things together for what we need. We did that again in 1997. Longshore and bar workers won strike the same day, and that was a big blow, and we needed to work to build that in a more consistent action. We need more consistent action when we take those things. We'll do the best, we, we're doing the best we can. So, I'd just like to, to end what I'm saying by this. There is no easy walk to freedom. And what we need is freedom from wage slavery. This lockout that's taking place in the, in the state of Washington, the scabs were brought in months ago to organize, to take over, and to, to basically run the court without the uh, longshoremen. And actually, there's very little information about this. Most workers are unaware that scabs are running the great port at the port of uh, Vancouver. It was fought against at EGT. Um, and there was a march on the point of Oakland to uh, fight the EGD conditions. Unfortunately, many of those uh, conditions, concession conditions in EGT are being imposed on longshoremen and other, other companies. And what, is, what are some of these conditions? These are conditions are a 12-hour day. Imagine that. The ILW, which fought for a six-hour day, is now working a 12-hour day in the, in the grain ports in uh, the Northwest. Also, a shape-up at the hiring hall. Now, I mean, the ILW, uh, people died in San Francisco in 1934 to get a union hiring hall. And now what is being happening is a shape-up is being brought on the workers. They're being forced to take a, sh uh, a shape-up. There's a struggle going on uh, in ILW Local 8 and Local 4 to defend their conditions. But there has to be an international campaign. And today in Tokyo, Japan, there's an action by the Japanese Railroad Workers Union, Doro Chiba, in solidarity with the uh, longshoremen in the Northwest. This is real internationalism because the workers in Japan and like the workers in the United States face union busters. It's not a question of Japanese capitalists or American capitalists or British capitalists. All the capitalists are the same. They want to break unions, they want to pit worker against the worker, and they want to destroy organized labor on a global level. We yeah, have the Wisconsin situation and Michigan, the auto bosses and their cohorts in the, uh, in the Michigan administration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you have the EGT get that contract shoved down their throats. And now the rest of the grain shippers, I guess they want their piece too. It's looking like a gang rape. So I think we need some honesty here and accountability. Last year, well, around after April 4th, when the ILW Local 10 was the only union in 2011 
to strike. It's all day with Wisconsin.